Uh, Secretary Blinken, Tony, welcome uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, your first visit as uh, Secretary of State. I have, uh, since we're running, we had a long discussion. Uh, we're running late, so I want to be very brief and speak about three points. The first point is uh, a vote of thanks to President Biden and you for uh, firmly supporting Israel's right of self-defense. Uh, I have to say that uh, Secretary Blinken in a previous capacity in 2014 when we had uh, another round of engagement against Hamas aggression uh, supported us by having uh, Iron Dome replenishments, a quarter of a billion dollars that you personally shepherded through the system very quickly and we remember it and we're very grateful to you. And you're giving meaning to this now, again, with replenishments of Iron Dome interceptors that save civilian lives on both sides. Uh, and we th we're grateful for that too. Uh, we too will give meaning to our commitment to our self-defense. If Hamas breaks the calm and attacks Israel, our response will be very powerful. And we have uh, discussed ways of how to work together to prevent Hamas uh, rearmament uh, with the weapons uh, and means of uh, aggression. The second point is uh, naturally is Iran. We discuss many regional issues, but none is greater than Iran. And I can tell you that I hope that the United States will not go back to the old G JCPOA because we believe that that deal paves uh, the way for Iran to have an arsenal of uh, nuclear weapons with international legitimacy. Um, we also iterated that whatever happens, Israel will always uh, reserve the right to defend itself against a regime committed to our destruction, committed to getting the weapons of mass destruction for that end. The third point is peace. Uh, we need to work together to expand normalization between Israel and uh, Arab and the Muslim world and deepen the peace treaties that we already have. Uh, we discussed also how to uh, improve the lives and the conditions of the Palestinians, the humanitarian conditions in Gaza, uh, including the question of the return of our uh, uh, MIAs and two civilians who are there, uh, as well as uh, building economic growth uh, for Judea Samaria, the West Bank, uh, with uh, international cooperation and participation. Uh, as for peace itself with the Palestinians, a formal peace, I think President Biden was absolutely correct when he said, you're not going to get peace until Israel is recognized as an independent Jewish state. And uh, that is the key. I couldn't agree more with President Biden. And I couldn't be happier than welcoming you here and your delegation uh, in Jerusalem. We have a lot to work for. Uh, we have common goals of peace, security, and prosperity. And I look forward to working with you on those in this visit and more. So welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Prime Minister, thank you for the very good uh, and, and lengthy conversation. Uh, I'm looking forward also to spending some more time with, uh, with some of our colleagues, with uh, Foreign Minister Ashkenazi, Defense Minister Gantz, as well uh, later uh, with uh, President Abbas uh, and uh, other Palestinian leaders. Uh, President Biden asked me to, uh, uh, to come here today really for four, uh, four reasons. First, to demonstrate the commitment of the United States to Israel's security, to start to work toward greater stability and reduce tensions in the West Bank uh, and Jerusalem, to support urgent humanitarian and reconstruction assistance for Gaza to benefit the Palestinian people, and to continue to rebuild our relationship with the Palestinian people and the Palestinian Authority. Intense uh, behind-the-scenes uh, diplomacy led by President Biden, working very closely with, um, with the Prime Minister, helped produce last week's ceasefire. Now we believe we must uh, build on it. That starts with the recognition that uh, losses on both sides uh, were profound. Casualties are often reduced uh, to numbers. But behind every number is an individual human being, a daughter, a son, a father, a mother, a grandparent, a best friend. Uh, and as the Talmud teaches, uh, to lose a life is to lose the whole world, whether that life is Palestinian or Israeli. 
I underscored uh, to the Prime Minister something that President Biden made crystal clear throughout the violence. The United States fully supports Israel's right to defend itself against attacks, such as the thousands of rockets fired by Hamas indiscriminately against uh, Israeli civilians. Uh, for the President, I think, as many of you know, this commitment is personal. Uh, it runs deep. Uh, he has been uh, one of Israel's most steadfast supporters for the last 50 years, uh, having worked closely with every Prime Minister, starting with Golda Meir and now with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Um, as the Prime Minister mentioned, we had a detailed discussion about Israel's security needs, including replenishing uh, Iron Dome. We'll continue to strengthen all aspects of our longstanding partnership. And that includes consulting closely with Israel, as we did today, uh, on uh, the ongoing negotiations in Vienna around a potential return to the Iran nuclear agreement uh, at the same time as we continue to work together to counter Iran's destabilizing actions uh, in the region. Uh, we know that to prevent a return to violence, uh, we have to use the space created uh, to address a larger set of underlying uh, issues and challenges. Uh, and that begins with tackling the grave humanitarian situation in Gaza and starting to rebuild. Um, the United States will work to rally international support uh, around that effort while also making our own significant contributions, including some that I'll announce later today. Uh, we'll work with our partners uh, closely with, uh, uh, with all to ensure that Hamas does not benefit from the uh, reconstruction assistance. At the same time, uh, we need to work to expand uh, opportunity for Palestinians in Gaza and in the West Bank, uh, including by strengthening the private sector, expanding trade and investment, uh, and uh, uh, other means. Assistance and investment uh, like these will help foster a more stable environment that uh, benefits Palestinians and also benefits Israelis. Um, Prime Minister and I had a chance to discuss other steps uh, that need to be taken by, by leaders on, on both sides to set a better course for their shared future. Uh, as President Biden has said, we believe that Palestinians and Israelis equally deserve to live safely and securely, to enjoy uh, equal measures of freedom, opportunity, and democracy, to be treated with uh, dignity. Um, we also discussed some of the uh, intercommunal violence that uh, erupted uh, in Israel during the conflict. And healing these wounds uh, will take leadership at every level uh, of society, from elected officials to community leaders uh, to neighbors. And we very much welcome the statements the Prime Minister made and members of his government made uh, condemning uh, the attacks regardless of whom they targeted. In our own country, in the United States, uh, we've witnessed a shocking eruption of anti-Semitic uh, attacks. As President Biden said uh, just yesterday, they are despicable and they must stop. Um, there's a lot of hard work ahead to restore hope, respect, and, and some trust uh, across communities. But We've seen the alternative, and I think that should cause all of us to redouble our efforts to preserve the peace and improve the lives of Israelis and Palestinians alike. But, Prime Minister, again, thank you so much for uh, all the time. Thank you for the very, very good uh, conversation. And uh, we look forward to doing a lot of work together. Thank you. And, th and thank you and the President for your strong statements against anti-Semitism. Masquerading is anti-Zionism, but it's anti-Semitism. And you took a bold position, clear position, and we appreciate it. I think all decent people, decent people everywhere appreciate that stance. Thank you.